we're back again, okay, with physical geography. Today, we're going to be covering part 8 on rocks, okay? Going to dive right into everything specific about rocks, what you need to know, and what are the exam requirements that is actually required of you. Okay, so without further ado, let's just go right in. Okay, let's not waste any time. All right. Firstly, you need to understand that there are three main types of rocks. Okay, you have got your igneous rocks, you have got sedimentary, and you have got metamorphic. Take note of these terms, we'll come back into what exactly they do, what are they, and um, how, how do they form in a bit, okay? Okay, firstly for igneous rocks, okay, you need to understand your syllabus requires you to understand what exactly they look like. Okay, so igneous rocks basically, they are, they are basically defined okay, to be distinctive due to their crystalline texture. Okay, so this is one thing that is actually very, very um, distinctive of them. Okay, and one more thing is that you need to understand that there are two subtypes of igneous rocks. Okay, you've got intrusive and you've got extrusive rocks. Okay, we'll go through what they are exactly later on. Okay, and, and know that um, igneous rocks are basically kind of like your first stage. Okay, so they are basically the first stage of your whole process of rock formation, whereby they are formed by cooling and solidification of uh, magma. Okay, which is basically like, you know, you under, you, you've learned volcanoes before, right? So it's basically magma from volcano. When it actually solidifies, it actually forms this thing called an igneous rock. Okay, igneous rocks, like I said, okay, they split out into two categories. You have got extrusive and you have got intrusive. So intrusive is, oops, sorry. Okay, so intrusive is one of them. Okay, and extrusive is the other. Okay. Basically, you just need to understand the rough definition of these, okay, and know that they are basically the opposite of one another. So just learn properly one of them, and the other one should be no issue. Okay, basically you need to know that intrusive rocks are basically coarse, okay, they are coarse grain, okay, they are large in size, and they have a very, very slow rate of cooling, okay, and they are also felsic in mineral con composition, so for instance, granite. Okay, so essentially what intrusive rocks are, they are basically rocks, that are extremely, 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 extremely huge, okay? These rocks, okay, because of their extremely large size, with the larger surface area, larger mass and everything, you actually take a longer rate or longer time to actually cool down. Okay, as well as them being extremely coarse. So think of it like huge boulders, okay? In the case um, of a specific example, you have got granite. Okay, on the other hand, extrusive rocks are actually the opposite. They are fine, Okay, in, 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 um, in your texture. They are extremely small in size and they have a very, very fast rate of cooling because of their extremely small size. Okay, and they are also mythic in mineral composition. These um, are basically rocks such as your um, basalt. Okay, so this is a clear example. So essentially, these are just the characteristics. Just have a rough understanding. It's not very, very important. Just have a rough understanding of how they look like um, and their size as well as um, the texture. So are they coarse or are they fine grain? Okay, next we move on to sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are slightly different, but at the same time, it's also very simple. Sedimentary rocks are basically extremely, extremely special. Why? Because of this idea of this strata. So it's basically due to their geologic structure. Okay, strata is basically a, like a, it's a, it's a piling up of different layers. Okay, whereby these layers are actually um, somewhat accumulated over time. Okay, and they build on top of one another. So when you've got all these layers building on top of one another, they actually form a sedimentary rock. Okay, so they are basically, like what I've already stated over here, layer accumulations of mineral particles from weathering and erosion of pre-existing rocks such as your igneous rocks. Okay, so when your igneous rocks are basically weathered and eroded, okay, as they start to pile up and, and apply pressure on one another, okay, they will start to compact. And when they compact, they will actually form a sedimentary rock. So the formation of a sedimentary rock, okay, there are two ways, like I've just mentioned. Okay, one of it would be your compaction, the other would be cementation. So compaction basically think of it as compacting things together. So you're squeezing things together. So when you squeeze rocks, okay, um, very, very small pieces of rocks together, when you squeeze them all together, they'll form different layers. So this formation of different layers is basically what will form a sedimentary rock. Okay, cementation, think of it as cement. Okay, it's like a solution. Okay, you cement things together, which means that through this solution, okay, whereby as seen over here, okay, as your materials are being carried in this solution and uh, through your groundwater, okay, the pores of all these rocks will actually fill up one another, and this would cause the sediments to join together, thereby forming a sedimentary rock. Okay, and the last type of rock that we have would be a metamorphic. Okay, metamorphic, they are basically distinctive. Why? 
um, in distinctive in terms of what? Basically foliated or non-foliated. So what does foliated or non-foliated mean? Okay, basically it is uh it's, it's, it's essentially basically like a rock structure. Okay. Think of it as though um it's kind of like crystals. Okay. So some uh, metamorphic rocks, okay, you may not see them very often. Okay, um, but basically they go through this pressure called metamorphism. Metamorphism essentially what it is is when there's extreme heat and pressure which is forced onto your igneous and sedimentary rocks. And when this heat and pressure is forced onto them, okay, it will actually cause them to crystallize. Okay, and when they recrystallize after which they will actually um, form larger crystals. And so these larger crystals, crystals are actually your metamorphic rocks. Okay. So metamorphism, there's actually three types. Okay, there's regional contact and dislocation. Not very important actually. The main thing you need to know are the agents of metamorphism. So in this case, you have got two main agents. One, uh, one of it will be your heat. The other will be your pressure. So just take note of these two um, agents of metamorphism. Okay, they are both required for a rock to actually go through metamorphism. So actually your exam requirements, right, for rocks is actually extremely simple. Okay, usually they tend to come out as two mark questions. It'll be very, very simple. They'll just ask you to identify, okay, based on structure, based on the material, okay, whether it's going to be an igneous rock, it will be a sedimentary rock, or it will be a metamorphic rock. So it can only be either one of these. Okay, usually the way to, to, distinct, uh, to distinguish them, okay, you just need to look at the structure. Okay, is it extremely large? Is it on the surface? Is it extremely deep into the ground? So usually if you see rocks that are on the surface, you instantly know that they're going to be igneous rocks. So if they're going to be igneous rocks, they need to identify. Okay, if they're going to be igneous rocks, are they extremely large or are they extremely small? So if they are very, very large, it could be granite. If they are small, it could actually be basalt. So just need to understand what your different types of rocks are. Okay, and exam requirements usually I've never seen rocks come up before. If it does come out, it'll be a very, very small proportion. Okay, the majority of this section should go towards your physical weathering, your chemical weathering, as well as following up the next part, which is going to be your cast landscape and your aerial landscape. Okay, so if not, that'll be all for this video. Okay, stay tuned for the next um, video, which should be something along the lines of cast, or possibly we'll go through, most likely go through physical and chemical weathering first, and then we'll follow up with cast after that um, to and then followed by Aeolian to actually sum up your entire physical geography syllabus. Okay, so be sure to subscribe, okay, because um, by subscribing, you're, you're aware of when my next videos are going to come out. Okay, and if not, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.